Hey, before we get started here, I just want to give a quick shout out to Danny over at Easy 8 Online Painting Club. Uh, he's got a channel over in the UK, does a lot of uh, building, painting, and he's a friend of uh, Out of This World Models and Minis. Uh, he has actually uh, put a link in his description to our channel here and uh, corresponded with him a couple times. He's a great guy. Uh, check him out. Yeah, it's a once a week, two hour show. He builds, he paints, he corresponds with uh, with people through uh, uh, through his live chat. Uh, just all around good guy, great show. I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, I will go ahead and put a link in our description to his channel. So, okay, on with the review. Okay, so first off, this is not a sponsored review. I bought this product with my own money. Uh, I saw it after watching a video of one of their other products, uh, the Rust Effects. Uh, I was watching a video from Grim Dark Compendium and was really interested in it. And when I saw they had a Vertigree, which is one of my favorite effects, I figured I'd check it out. Uh, after receiving it, I noticed that it came packed in a little baggie here with this weird material. I actually contacted the company to find out what that was because I don't know what's in the bag. So uh, they, uh, they let me know that it's actually a product called Vermiculite. And when I looked it up, it's the same stuff you find in potted plants and flowers. Uh, to it's like a, like little silvery chips uh, to keep the uh, the soil aerated and uh, moist. So I was like, okay, that's different. But uh, yeah, so it's uh, still downstairs in a little baggie. But uh, yeah, like I said before, I'm a huge fan of uh, the vertigree effect. So when I saw this, I wanted to check it out. It is pricey. These uh, these little bottles are 20 bucks each. And that's not with uh, with shipping included, so it's uh, I think it was about 28 bucks total for this. But yeah, 25 milliliters, 0.85 fluid ounces. Yeah, it's uh, it's a little pricey. I mean, even uh, even Citadel doesn't have anything that's uh, as expensive as this. But uh, like I said, it's uh, I'm a fan of the of the effect. I really wanted to try this out, so I decided I would uh, go ahead and uh, take a shot at it. Uh, a little sneak preview there yep I do like it so I always figured that this would go on really cool on, uh, on a big statue so I went ahead and uh, built up this uh, basiliconum statue and painted it with some uh, Vallejo model color bronze green it's actually one of my new favorite greens uh, it's got that dark kind of aged bronze look to it and over the top of that I'm just putting some uh, Vallejo uh, game color tinny tin and uh, just uh, very watered down because I wanted some of that bronze green to come through and I'm actually gonna speed up the uh, the video here because you're here for the uh, vertigree not for the painting but you're gonna get a little bit of both uh, I actually did some dry brushing with the uh, with the tinny tin to bring that up and then uh, yeah from there on we uh, start looking at uh, where we're going to start putting some of the uh, the vertigree paint effect. Now, when I first saw the uh, the sister product to this, the Dirty Down Rust, it was on another video. It was one for the from uh, Oh Zet Cascagoon over at Grim Dark Compendium. Uh, they were doing a uh, I think it was a Space Wolf. Uh, they were putting some rust on it, and it it was honestly your one stop shop. It gave you the best rust effects I've ever seen and I love rusting up and weathering these things uh, I said it before in the past I don't like the parade look I don't like the bright and shiny I like it uh, like it, it's grim dark I want to see it looking grim dark so that's uh, that kind of sparked my interest with this Now, normally with uh, for a vertigree effect, there's so many different kind of paints out there. Your Nylac Oxide here. There's a couple uh, different greens from Citadel. Uh, you've got your other ones from Vallejo. Uh, actually, you got a model color and no, it's a, a game color and a game effects. They both say vertigree, but they're both a little bit different. Uh, there they are, right there. Yep, turn that around. Yep, both say vertigree. And they're different colors imagine that 
but there's uh, yeah, there's a lot of different uh, colors you could use out there because every, everyone has their own idea of what it should look like. And there's the uh, there's the star of the show right there. Now, when I opened it up, the first thing I thought of was uh, Tamiya Clears, like your clear red, clear orange. It has that smell to it. It's like a lacquer smell to it. And there's a little shaker ball in there, so give that a good shake and go to town. Now, I put my little uh, paint holder there because unlike Nolan Oil, if I spill this, I'm going to be a little bit more upset. Uh, I could spill a few bottles of Nolan Oil before I uh, uh, incur the cost that, uh, that this little bottle did. But, uh, yeah, just going on... Uh, a little sloppy because uh, I just wanted to see what it was going to look like after it dried. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to be as thick as it is. I'm sure that uh, you could probably water it down, put it in, put it into an airbrush. But I really don't do a whole lot of weathering through my airbrush, so I decided to just use the uh, just use the paintbrush. Now I did notice as it started to uh, dry in front of me that it does leave some hard edges not a problem you can actually uh, once it's dry you take a cotton swab with a little bit of water it reactivates the paint but it also starts to pull it away now on the bottle it does say it's semi-permanent so you could basically just get all of your like fine tuning with your your wet cotton swab get all that out of the way and then once you're happy with that then you could probably put a varnish over it uh, normally i don't do a whole lot of varnishing with metallic like over metallics but it's available to you if you want to do that. Now, just like the rust paint that was reviewed or actually used on the uh, Grim Dark Compendium video, they mentioned that you don't want to use this in a palette. Uh, just work straight out of the bottle because it will dry out on you pretty quick. I found the same thing with this. So that's why I'm just dipping my brush in. Now, there were a few spots where I went over the same area like two maybe three times that was out of curiosity i wanted to see what the layering would actually do because i'm used to using three maybe four paints to get uh get my final result and final effect so i just figured i'd just have some fun with this and see where i could take it and there's a quite a few spots on there that uh like so like on the back there you can see like the like uh, cogs and inner workings and all that yeah, I just slathered that on there. I just wanted to see what's going to happen. Okay, so this is 30 minutes after I cleaned my brush off and put everything away. You can see that, uh, yeah, there's there are some harsh edges on there. Uh, but what I do is I just take a damp uh, cotton swab and I start to knock some of that back. Uh, looking back now, I could probably start to say, say okay, five cents, ten cents. There's a quarter that I just wiped away, but uh, it's it's all in good fun. Uh, I'm really, really liking the uh, the effect that I'm getting on here, and it just it's just going to get even better once the uh, once the, the watered down stuff starts to dry. And you'll see I'm just cleaning up some of those hard edges right there. Uh, a lot of the spots like on the shoulder pads where it got a little too rough. There's a few areas uh, that maybe were hit a second or third time that probably shouldn't have been, but I wanted to see how it was gonna work out. And you can actually see a little bit of that uh, that light patina starting to come through as the uh, the watered down uh, paint starts to dry. Now by this point in time, I'm really starting to appreciate the fact that this is going to take the place of like two, maybe even three different paints that I would use to get this uh, same kind of effect. And uh, moving on, it's just going to make it a lot easier and a lot faster to finish. Okay, three hours later, I actually went shopping in between uh, the last segment and now, and you can see where that watered down just started to uh, give you that that, uh, that lighter patina. 
which uh, ain't a lot of people, ain't, some people like it, some people don't. I'm actually putting on a little bit more of the verdigris paint right now, just because uh, I want to see what's going to do on top of the uh, the dried uh, the dried areas. There are still a few spots that I could clean up. I'll get to those. I just uh, wanted to see how well this uh, this effect was going to come through after one an initial base coat, and then two after breaking it down with some water and uh, kind of cleaning up certain areas. Okay, so yeah, like I said before, the uh, the application on this one was just all brush. Uh, after watching the video of the uh, sister product, the, uh, the Dirty Down Rust, and seeing that it dries so fast if you try to put it on a palette, I didn't want to. I didn't want to chance it in my airbrush because uh, I want to spray some, stop the airbrush, go back to it, and then next thing you know, it's all clogged up because it dried up on me. So I just went straight with the uh, with the brush application, and seems like I had no uh, no issues. And there's a couple of hard spots there, but those do eventually get uh, knocked back. And you know, this was a learning experience with this paint, and I had a great time with it. So all in all, I did enjoy the uh, using this paint. It is a one-stop shop. You don't have to use three and four different colors. The only drawback is the price. Yeah, that's twenty dollars is a lot, uh, a lot of money to spend for something that's not even a full ounce of uh, of paint. But all in all, in the end, it's your decision. It's your uh, those are your hobby dollars. If you're looking to paint something big, I would say just go with your Three, two or three different color mix from your uh, your different paint companies. If you're looking at something small or you just want to try it out and have it in your arsenal, say like for your copper pieces on your Death Guard uh, shoulder pads, yeah, by all means, try it out. It's actually it's a really cool product. Uh, I actually I did spend the money and get the uh, the Dirty Down Rust because there's a few things I want to try that on. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a review like this on it or not, but if you'd like to see it. Put it in the comments. I'll try it out. And then, uh, yeah, while you're at it, go ahead and give the video a like. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And we're, uh, like I said, I'm uh, having so much fun with this right now and uh, coming up with different ideas. I know I've got a few friends that want to see more sci-fi models, which those are coming. But, uh, yeah, I mean, towards the, uh, let's see, towards the end of this, I see, let's see, yep, there's about a quarter that was wasted right down the side of the bottle. But, uh we're going to end this here. I'm going to give you my review. I already gave you a thumbs up there. And uh, yeah, out of five, we're going to four. And obviously that one is for the uh, the cost. This is a pricey bottle of paint. But if you're really interested, try it out. And as always, I thank you for watching.